Good freaking afternoon, everyone. I wanted to start off with a brief TBR, even though I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be reading. I've been doing this thing all year where I just choose what I wanna read next. I just see what's available on audio, I see what's on my shelf and what I feel like, and I do it. I am gonna start a book today. Me and my friend from Twitter named Megan are going to buddy read Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maliscalco. I'll link Megan down below. Her tweets are so sweet and wholesome, and she's such a cutie, and I love her, which is ironic that we're reading a book about serial killers and I don't know why there are surgical tools on the back but lord help us. This is a book that I was not really interested in until the people who I trust on Stan Twitter started talking about it and they were like it's good. We trust in the higher forces of nature. I'm actually not entirely sure what to expect going into this. The only synopsis I can gather is that it's set in London in the 18... 80s or some kind of Jack the Ripper setting and it's about this girl who's a feminist and she's snarky and fights back and defies gender stereotypes of the time and her uncle is in forensics and she helps him with that and she's trying to solve who Jack the Ripper is. Maybe. <laughs> I think the third book just came out or is coming out and this might be a slow burn series so I might have to read them back to back and break a book buying ban that I don't have because I have books to haul. I had a textbook to order from Thrift Books. Thrift Books also has cheap books that I want to read for fun. So I got one textbook and a couple of funsies books. I believe the fun books shipped before the textbook so this might just be the books were fun, but I don't quite remember what I ordered, so let's have a gander. Ugh, it's the one for class. The book that I needed for class is His Last Bow by Arthur Conan Doyle, which is one of the short story collections of Sherlock Holmes, which is super duper fun, and BT dubs about Sherlock Holmes, they're really enjoyable. I mean, if you can put aside the fact that there are no women in the stories, I don't know what that noise was, but Doreen, please chill. They're actually really easy to understand. They're fun, they're quick, tangent over. Also got a copy of The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson, the Shades of London series, if you will. Another one of my friends from book Twitter named Stacy is really obsessed with the series and she says it's so underhyped. I've heard her talk about it for years and never had an interest in it until, I don't know. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's another Jack the Ripper story. <laughs> so it's about this girl who goes to boarding school in London in and then things start happening that mirror Jack the Ripper. Wow. I should read these two back to back and see what's better. But I know Stacy has the same taste as me as far as character based books and really good character dynamics and inks. I trust her reviews. Finally, I have this. This is a big ol' package from Sourcebooks. I don't know how they have my address, but that's fine, because they decided to send me a box of, I quote, this season's hottest new YA releases. You can't see me cutting it, I'll narrate. I am cutting the box open. I'm gonna put my hair up. Ooh, I'm gonna do a side ponytail like that character from Napoleon Dynamite. Cute. This is very heavy. I'm sure there are multiple books in here. <laughs> What do we have? What do we have? So we have all of them on this sheet. I think we don't read sheets. We don't give a sheet. <laughs> First we have The XY by Virginia Bear Bear Virgin. Maybe I do need this to give you a succinct synopsis of each of them. In a society where women rule and men are almost extinct, hell yeah. River discovers a dark secret that will change her world as she knows it. Next we have The Similars by Rebecca Hanover. The succinct synopsis for this one is six clones, one elite boarding school, countless deadly secrets. Okie doke. Next we have The Last Eight by Laura Pohl. The succinct synopsis for this is the end of the world just got interesting in this thrilling post-apocalyptic debut perfect for fans of the fifth wave. I can't believe they made a book specifically for one person. Me. No shade to everyone who hates the fifth wave but the fifth wave is amazing choke. Okay, so it's about an alien invasion going to Area 51 where she joins a band of misfits who call themselves the last teenagers on Earth. I don't think I can handle both this and AHS apocalypse at the same time unless I just want to go start screaming on the street corners that the end of the world is coming. A Danger to Herself and Others by Alyssa Scheinwall. The succinct synopsis for this one is only when she's locked away does the truth begin to escape. Wow, I love Shatter Me by Todd Moffy. <laughs> so it's about a girl who is institutionalized because they think she's a danger to herself and others. It's about two girls that meet to like confide their secrets in each other. Huh. Next they sent me After the Fire by Will Hill. The succinct synopsis for this one is a teenager's world is shattered in a devastating confrontation between the cult she grew up in and the forces of the US government. So this is a girl who grew up in a cult. 
Finally, I was sent a finished copy of a book called The Dark Beneath the Ice by Emilienda Beruba. Black Swan meets paranormal activity in this literary thriller about a former dancer who discovers that sometimes nightmares are real. Under the themes in this book, it says it talks about mental health and LGBTQ. So this one also has LGBT characters in it. I dig it. Thank you, source books, for all these titles. I forgot to mention something. This clip is partially a reading update, but mostly just me saying, when it's the weekend, I don't feel like doing anything. I have like six assignments that I have to read before Tuesday and I've started like one of them. At 9 p.m. I was like, oh, I'm gonna start and do my homework. And now it's like 5 a.m. And I'm only halfway through one of them and it's not even one that's due on Tuesday. It's one that's due on Thursday. So like, I don't know if I make it look like, oh, she reads so much. Oh, she does all her work. Like, oh, she has two jobs and she is so good at managing her time. For the past two hours, I've been reading graphic novels and poetry on script just because I don't feel like doing my actual homework and like today I slept until 4 p.m. And it's just not a good routine, but I can't I like don't know how to snap out of it I don't have work tomorrow until 12 so thankfully I'll still probably get like six hours of sleep before then But I'm just so tired of not having it together because I thought that I would have it together Because the last time that I had an 8 a.m. Class it was like the semester that I was on my game for everything I did all my assignments early. I went to bed at 11:30 every night I was never this stressed out about not having my shit together. Like I vlogged to tell you I'd started stalking Jack the Ripper, but I got like six pages into it before I fell asleep reading it and took a nap at like 8 p.m. So like I said, I've started two books on Scribd that are not on my TBR whatsoever, but I figured I might as well finish them if I started them and I'm liking them. So the first thing I started is It's All Absolutely Fine by Ruby Elliott. This is a graphic novel, memoir, nonfiction book that's kind of interspersed with prose about Ruby's life dealing with mental illness and it's all little comic strips that are like sarcastic. I think it's really really funny but kind of hard to read on a computer screen because the text is so tiny. Ruby has depression, bipolar disorder, and eating disorder. I also just realized tonight that Scribd has a lot of the poetry books that have been on my wish list for a while so I started Calling a Wolf a Wolf by Kaveh Akbar. The brunt of this is about how he feels disconnected from his culture being in America. He's Iranian American American, so a lot of his poems are inspired by that, but he also is a recovering alcoholic So more of it is devoted to struggling with recovery as well as a lot of identity issues I googled him just so that I could see what nationality he's from and may I just say Beautiful human being, but beyond his physical appearance. I do really really like his poetry It takes a lot to impress me with poetry now just because so much of it is a run-of-the-mill milk of honey material But I think this one has an every poem a line that stops and makes me go Whoa. I'm gonna read a short selection from this one. If you don't care about poetry, you skip ahead to this time. Regarding loss, I'm afraid to keep it in the story. Worried what I might bring back to life. Like the marble angel who woke to find his innards scattered around his feet. Blood from the belly tastes sweeter than blood from anywhere else. We know this, but don't know why. The woman on TV dabs a man's gut wound with her hijab, then draws the cloth to her lips, confused. I keep dreaming I'm a creature pulling out my claws one by one to sell on a market stall next to stacks of pomegranates and garden tools. It's predictable, the logic of dreams. Long ago I lived in heaven because I wanted to. When I fell to earth, I knew the way, through the soot, into the leaves. It still took years. Upon landing, the ground embraced me sadly with the gentleness of someone delivering tragic news to a child. Superior. Just like every line. Amazing. Hello. So as you probably well know, it's been a hot second since I've updated. I feel like I have no grounds to complain because I'm only taking two classes this semester. But something about this past week was just cut throat. I had so many reading assignments that I was up until like 3 a.m. And I think it might be the fact that I'm working like 20 hours this semester year. That goes to say that I have not even glanced at a book these past couple of days. I don't even remember my last update, but I don't doubt that it was me saying I was gonna start stalking Jack the Ripper. Yeah, I made it six pages into it before falling asleep and not picking it back up. But because my course load is just literally like 200 pages of reading per night, there's just no way I can do that plus reading for fun. But tonight, it's the weekend. I was like, I just wanna pick up something like fun and easy and quick. I picked up three things. Who's on Boo Boo the Fool? First, 
I was like, oh, I'll read a romance book. So I picked up Hold Me by Courtney Milan, which is a new adult book with a trans main character. I'm 17 pages into this and I really, really like it. It's super fun and easy. It's already very sassy and has a lot of witty social commentary. But for some reason I put that down and also started Why God is a Woman by Nin Andrews, which is a poetry book. This is kind of a story rather than a poetry book. I mean, it's considered poetry because it's short little selections, but it's one big narrative about what the world would be like if women were the dominant sex. So every poem is like a little short story that flows into each other. And it's really good and it made me cry because I'm on my period. But like I said, it's more like a story than poetry. Because I am Boo Boo the Fool, I thought why not go for a third book? So I also started Fun Home by Alison Bechtel, which is a graphic novel. And I made it 54 pages into this one. And this is an autobiographical graphic novel. All I know about it so far is it's about her family and Allison's a lesbian so hopefully that comes into play too. The brunt of this book is about her relationship with her father. So far this is probably one of my new favorite graphic novels of all time just because I've never read a graphic novel before that has a narration throughout that's so gorgeous. Typically when I read graphic novels I just kind of skim the words and like go with the dialogue and the pictures but the actual discussion of the storyline throughout is so brilliantly written and all the words are amazing and I'm just like wow. But yeah, that's my Sarah without an H-esque laying down vlog as I talk about not being able to decide something to read. I also got approved for an arc of Christina Lauren's new book. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put the book title. I started that on Kindle and it was good, but then I stopped reading it. As much as I want to say, I'll pick one of these books and finish it this weekend. I have homework. Honestly, I could probably finish all my homework tomorrow and then read Sunday, but I'm Boo Boo the Fool. You know I don't plan ahead like that. I'm probably gonna sit in bed, pick my butt, and go on Tumblr all day. Aurora's new album dropped. Oh my gosh, I feel like we should talk about this. I was gonna do a reaction to Aurora's new songs, but I knew I'd just get copyrighted if that happened. I've been listening to the album on repeat all day today. My favorites from the album are It Happened Quiet, All, it starts with the word All. All I Am Is Soft, I don't remember. <laughs> but that one is a really pretty chorus. And then the last one, which is the title of the album, which I can't remember. Usually sophomore albums disappoint me, but I liked this one. Basically, music has just been great in 2018. You can follow me on Spotify if you want to see some of my playlists and see what I'm listening to. I'll probably link it down below, but if not, Witty Novels, Whitney Atkinson, just try and find me. Bops. Dot com. So yeah, this is my dinner. If you've never tried this creation, please experience it. 10 out of 10. Ah. Knock knock, who's there? It's me, Boo Boo the Fool, for being the type of person that I am. A whole weekend went by and what did I do? Lay in bed, pick my butt, and do nothing, as predicted. I am not on my grind, folks, and I don't know how to get back on that. I don't want this whole vlog to be a rant about me not doing my homework, but I literally haven't touched a book since we last talked. So you saw on the timestamp, it's 5 a.m. So since I'm not tired, I'm gonna throw my phone across the room and actually sit down and read some homework before bed. Is this what senioritis feels like? I think this is what senioritis is. People were really sipping dumb bits juice today and testing me. After a long day of tomfoolery, I just want to talk to you about some books. <laughs> I'm not even joking, one of my coworkers just almost electrocuted herself because she put scissors in an outlet. Also, I saw a snake this morning. Today has just been very chaotic evil. I am ready to move on to some good news. Speaking of dumb bitch juice, She's been sipping it as well because I've not touched a book. I didn't want to vlog and keep repeating the same thing over and over, but I've just been staying up until like 5 a.m. doing homework because I procrastinate and I don't feel like doing it. Well, actually I read one thing and that was for class. I finished Walden by Henry David Thoreau. I don't know if I even talked about this extensively. This is a book of essays about this dude who was like, frick society, I want to go live in a cabin in the woods that I built for two years. So these are all just essays about him connecting with me Nature. criticisms of humanity and consumerism and materialism and then this call to action to like live a simpler life and pave your own path and all that. We read the entire thing and I only enjoyed the first and the last essays. 
I mean, okay, it's really good, but I feel like the first and the last essays have this universal message that like every part of it was good. The middle was just kind of boring. I was skim reading them at 4 a.m. So I think if I would have slowed down and read this or listened to the audiobook like I ended up doing for the last few chapters, I probably would have enjoyed it more. But I gave this four stars. I have a copy of it that I don't have to return as a rental book, so I might reread it one day. I would say on the scale of classics, this is one that's pretty accessible and easy to read if you're not in class and you're interested. And there were a lot of good quotes. Like often I would just write like wow in the margins because it was really thought inspiring. I got two packages today. One of them is the second half of a thrift books order that you saw on my other vlog. I got three books that I just thought sounded interesting. Story time at the end. First book I got is Dying, a memoir by Corey Taylor. This is a hardback with no dust jacket. So that's kind of sassy. This is one of Obama's favorite books of 2017. So I was like, yes, daddy, I'll buy it. Can't believe I just called our ex-potus daddy. This book follows a woman who contracts cancer. So this is one woman's memoir about what it feels like to be dying. I don't know much more beyond that, but it's very short and Obama liked it. So we stand. Next, I got a romance book. This is Acting on Impulse by Mia Sosa. I would definitely read this synopsis to you, but this is an ex-library copy with a sticker on it that no one warned me about. I'm just warning you, I'm turning into a 40-year-old suburban white mom getting mad at very little things, such as almost witnessing someone die and electrocute themselves today because they don't know to put scissors in an electrical outlet. Let me peel off the sticker so I can read you a synopsis. <laughs> So this book is about a girl named Tori who goes through a really rough breakup and so she wants to recover from that and just get some girl time to herself. So she goes to Aruba for a vacation, you know, trying to have that good me time like Jenna Marbles. While she's there, her me time is interrupted by Carter Stone, who is a Hollywood actor who is in Aruba to do a role in a new movie. Shenanigans ensue. But I believe both the main characters are people of color, so we'll find out. The final book I got from Thrift Books is You're in the Wrong Bathroom and 20 Other Myths and Misconceptions about Trans gender and gender non-conforming people. I realized when compiling a list of feminist literature that I don't have a lot of queer studies. So I'm interested in this book just because I don't know a lot about the hardships that they go through, especially from own voices, authors who are trans themselves. However, as you notice, this book was sent to me as a uncorrected proof edition, which means it's supposed to not be for sale. I definitely sent a 40 year old suburban white mom email to thrift books being like, hello, you sent me the wrong products that were not advertised as ARCs or as library copies, what can you do about this to fix this? And they were like, here's a refund. I was like, thank you. Finally, I got an unexpected package. Penguin Teen has just been on the roll sending me unexpected packages. But I got a final copy of A Map of Days by Ransom Riggs, which comes out today, October 2nd. Wait. Today is the book birthday of Destroy Me coming out in 2012 and they share a book birthday. <laughs> I already read this book as an arc I talked about a couple reading vlogs ago, but this is the fourth book in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. Really expands the story to new heights. I think you are going to love this if you already loved the trilogy. And I did love the trilogy. I think this has some of the coolest characters. This series follows a boy named Jacob who has always heard stories from his grandfather that there are these children who have strange abilities. And then one day on a vacation to Wales after his grandfather mysteriously passes away, more and more creepy things start happening and Jacob realizes that this paranormal world with these strange people is real. Is that a spoiler? I might have just spoiled all of book one. It's a series about people with powers and these demon villain creatures that are always hunting them. The original trilogy was all set in like London and Europe. This one's entirely set in the US so you get a whole new political system of all the- mm, that's a spoiler. It's different. Love it read it. And along with that book came this cute little, I think this was the pre-order incentive for this series. We have this little doodad, which is this photo viewer of all these different peculiar photos. If these are scary, I'm gonna pee myself. There we go. <gasps> Can y'all see that? It has the book title. Ooh, I don't know what that is. <gasps> it's Miss Peregrine! Oh my god, this is so cool! Oh god, there's a clown. Oh no, please go away. I didn't know if I'd actually use this, but I am definitely keeping this on my bookshelf because that was awesome. So that's all the books that I've read and bought, but I have a couple that I'm getting rid of. <laughs> As you can see, this shelf was a little more naked than the last time you saw it. However, I was going through my bookshelf on an Instagram live stream the other day and I found some books that I don't want to keep. I don't know, I guess Thoreau inspired me to live the simple life. 
And so I have like a handful of books here that I'm like, I'm not going to read them. First is Breaking Night by Liz Murray. I started this book on audiobook and it's a memoir about this girl who goes from being homeless to going to Harvard. I just have so many more memoirs that I'm interested in and this one was dragging and I really just didn't care about. I couldn't really connect to the story. I thought it would be fun on audiobook, but I just didn't really care. So I stopped listening to that and I don't really want to continue. I'm getting rid of Confessions of a Shopaholic by Sophie Kinsella. I do want to read Sophie Kinsella. I just don't think I'm going to enjoy this one that much because how dated it is. So I've heard she has other better books. I'm just going to pick those ones up instead. I'm getting rid of Money by Martin Amis, which is a literary fiction story that's just controversial and talks about like alcohol, tobacco, pills, pornography. Just the normal things in life. Honestly, I picked this one up just because it was out of my comfort zone, which is a big reason why I'm probably not going to read it. The person who had this before me marked in it a lot, but I just think it's a little distracting. That's another reason why I'm just going to keep putting off not reading it. Then I have A Visit from the Coon Squad by uh, the, the Jennifer Egan. I wanted to read this so badly because it's so well known, a Pulitzer Prize winner, but I just reread the synopsis and I was really just delving into my psyche and I was like, I don't care. It's about punk rockers. I hate books that talk about music. It's just something that's not interesting to me. And there's other books that have won the Pulitzer and the Man Booker that I'm more interested in reading. One of them not being <laughs> The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. I told myself I would but realistically I'm not. And this one won the man booker. I'm sure it's wonderful. I'm never gonna find the motivation to read it. If I do, I'll probably just get a different copy because this is a UK edition and already those quotation marks are throwing me off. I don't know what I was thinking with this. Finally, I don't think I'm gonna get rid of this. I just think I'm not gonna keep it with me here. Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I have sharp objects. I want to read sharp objects, but <laughs> I'm not a fan of thriller. And I say that entirely from the perspective of I don't read thriller. So maybe I'll love this. I'm just gonna put this aside, leave it at home. I bought this for my mom. She's already read it, so I really have no reason to hold on to it, especially if I don't like sharp objects. I'm just not gonna hold on to this. If your day was diarrhea, clap your hands. If your day was diarrhea, clap your hands. If your day was diarrhea and you wanna drop out. If your day was diarrhea, clap your hands. I haven't seen your vlog in a while. Here. Hey guys, it's me, Nicole. So I haven't seen y'all in a while. Here's a reading update. Hold on, I have a thing to say. <clears throat> I know Kaylin's funnier than me and prettier than me <laughs> and controls the camera better than me, but y'all can stop commenting that she needs to take over this channel. It's very rude. <laughs> very rude. It's okay, they don't even know how to spell my name. <laughs> C-A-Y-L-A-N. Back with another reading update. Luckily, she hasn't read since the last time she was. Yeah, um, actually, the last time I read, I was on page 53 of New Moon. I am now on page 185. It's good. Probably gonna stay at that page number for a hot minute. You know, she just fell off the motorcycle because she's dumb, so. Julia, what's your reading update? We're still on Fire with Fire, the second book in the Burn for Burn series, but this is all I have left. It's getting lit. I can't wait to finish it and move on to Ashes. You look like a goddess right now. Look at like a snake. Did you put a highlight on your shoulder? I I'm just naturally glowy. Cause girl, you is killing the game with that salt shaker. Shake it like a salt shaker. <laughs> I guess this is just the go-to angle for this vlog, <laughs> laying down. I actually am home right now. Hello, house. I already filmed a couple clips while I was here, but I realized this vlog is already super long, so I should probably just stop talking. Have this one be over with, and we'll talk about what I read this weekend whenever I am in the next vlog. So I wanted to sign off here, but not before I talk about the two books that my monkey brain stressed on homework did finish. So I updated briefly about these two books when I was still currently reading them. The first book I finished was a graphic novel called It's All Absolutely Fine, I believe, by Ruby Elliott. I think I already explained what it's about. It's a graphic novel about this girl and her mental health and I gave it like four stars. I thought it was really funny and sarcastic and I liked the angle it came at it from but I don't have bipolar disorder or an eating disorder so a lot of it that was more specific about those I couldn't really relate to so it was just kind of like flipping flipping. Also she would put these sections in between all of her pictures for each and she would have like a two or three page little segment about how she got through that time of her life. What advice she had, all the different stereotypes about it that she's trying to get rid of with that book. 
And although I think it was great and well written, I ended up just kind of skipping those toward the end because I think they got like repetitive and a little bit obvious. But still, I think it was really fun. A lot of it was super relatable, especially if you have anxiety or depression and you like to laugh about it sometimes. I also finished that poetry book that I'd started called Calling a Wolf a Wolf by Kaveh Akbar. Again, I explained the synopsis for this one, but I finished it just in awe. I'm getting really picky about poetry where I don't just want like milk and honey simple poetry that's like, I loved him. Which I don't know if that makes me sound like an asshole being like, I only want good poetry. I'm trying to find this sweet spot of poetry where it's a little deeper than that, but also I get so lost when I try and jump into something like Sylvia Plath. I'm not really good at analyzing poems, but I also don't want to just be spoon fed words. And I think this was a perfect middle ground. I read this on Scribd, so it was an ebook, so I need to get this in person so I can underline all the lines and every single poem I was obsessed with. This author just has such a good use of metaphors and language and every time he would say something pretty sometimes I didn't even understand what he was trying to talk about but the way that he said it I was just like whoa. <laughs> this is definitely something I want to revisit. I highly recommend it. A lot of poetry books I read I go away from it not really having an impression of it after a couple days but it's been about a week since I finished it right now and I'm still thinking about it. Like there's still specific poems that I'm just like, whoa, that one was so good. So I definitely want to get my hands on a physical copy of that and I highly recommend it if you're into poetry and you have kind of the same taste as me or the same, I guess, comprehension level as me. Little sneak peek for next vlog. I'm home right now because Lainey Taylor is having a book signing on Sunday. So I'm gonna go to the used bookstore tomorrow and sell some books and then I'm gonna go to the book signing on Sunday and then go home and then read Moby Dick and cry. But that's my life. I was missing my babies. Do you see them? Oof, so sexy. Also, my bed is so hideously covered in boxes and stuff and I'm too lazy to go clean it off. It do be like that sometimes. Searching low in the night.